Thanks for joining me today as we learn how to write our names in binary code. But what is binary code? To learn about binary code, first you have to understand that there's lots of different ways to represent numbers called number systems. The number system that we use in everyday life is called the decimal system or base 10. Counting in base 10 looks like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Other common number systems include hexadecimal, or base 16, octal, base 8, and binary, base 2. So you see, binary is just a different number system than the one we're used to. Counting in binary looks different, too. It looks more like this. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. But why are there only ones and zeros, you ask? That's because the base two number system only has two digits to work with. We call these dig binary digits bits, which is just a combination of the word binary digits. In base 10, you have 10 unique digits to represent numbers. And in base 16, you have 16 unique digits. So when you count in base two, you have two digits or bits, one and zero. So what happens if you wanna represent the number two in binary? Let's take a look at what we do in the decimal system when we run out of digits to use. Base 10 has digits zero through nine. We use these to represent all of the different numbers. When we reach the number nine, we don't have any more new digits to represent the number 10. So we start over with the number zero and we place a one in the tens place. We continue with this pattern until we reach the number 99 and we can't go any further. That's when we start over again with zeros in the ones and tens place and we put a one in the hundreds place. Phase two works the same way. When we run out of new bits to use, we start over with a zero in the far right space and place a one in the next space to the left. So the number two in base two looks like this, one, zero. This may sound a little confusing at first, but once you spend some time discovering the pattern, you'll find it's much easier than you originally thought. So why in the world do we need binary? One of the biggest reasons is because binary is how computers think. On its own, a computer can't do much of anything. They need humans to give them very specific instructions in order to perform a function. But regular speech won't work because a computer is just a bunch of hardware. They don't have ears and eyes and a mouth like, human, like a human does. They can't understand human language. That's why we need programmers to write instructions for the computers in a language they will understand. The set of instructions they write are called programs or software. The computers you have at home have lots of software on them telling them how to do their job. However, the computer still can't understand the software on its own because it is written in a way for humans to be able to read it. That's where binary code comes in. Binary code is a long string of ones and zeros that translate the software programs written by computer programmers into a form the computer can understand. So why don't programmers just write their code in binary in the first place? Why do they bother with other coding languages? Simply put, it's much faster to write a code in another language besides binary. On the first slide, you may have noticed a long string of bits beneath the title. Those ones and zeros actually spell out the word hello. There's a lot of space there to say one simple word. So that's why humans use coding languages like Java, C++, or Python to write instructions for computers. It would take way too long to spell everything out in binary. Now that we understand a little bit about how binary works, let's have some fun with it. On this slide, you see a chart that has lots of letters, numbers, and symbols translated into binary code. Notice that there is a difference between the binary codes for uppercase and lowercase letters. With these characters, you can write complete sentences with punctuation and everything. You'll also notice that each character has exactly eight ones and zeros. 
The explanation for this is a little bit outside of the scope of this class, but just know that traditionally you write each character in binary code with eight bits to keep everything uniform. For now though, try writing out your name in binary code. You'll find it's pretty easy, right? Did you know you can use other things besides ones and zeros to represent binary code? Computers actually use electricity to understand the commands that are written for them by programmers. You can use any two things to represent ones and zeros of binary code, like colors, shapes, or electricity. You can use red to stand for the ones and yellow to stand for the zeros. Or you could use squares to represent ones and triangles to represent zeros. Computers actually use on and off to represent ones and zeros. When the electricity is flowing through the circuits, computer circuits, that stands for one. And when the flow of electricity is turned off, that means zero. You can choose any two things you like. Like this bracelet, which uses white beads for the zeros and green beads for the ones. The black beads are used to represent spaces. What do you have around your house that you could use to represent bits in binary code? How about different colored Legos? Or maybe different types of cereal? Now that you know a little bit about how binary works, see what kind of things you find around your house to represent ones and zeros, and use the chart to spell words with a, or write a secret message to your friends that your family can decode. And so thanks for learning about binary code with me today, and we'll see you next time.